What's the future of humanity's most futuristic project? Seventeen years ago, a village came together to raise a child. An ever-growing child. A child who, at last measurement, weighed 924,739 pounds, spanned the area of a U.S. football field, and ran on 2.3 million lines of computer code. And I know what you're thinking. Mega Robo Kitten. No. But I like the way you think. I'm actually talking about the International Space Station. This is an amazing facility, and we have done phenomenal research aboard the ISS. But the greatest adventures of the ISS are still ahead of it, including adding new modules to the space station, like the BEAM. That stands for Bigelow Expandable Activity Module. And by expandable, they really mean inflatable. Once connected to the space station's ports, the internal pressurization system and air that's contained within it will expand the module out to its full size. Now, all of that is really cool, but let me tell you something that's even more cool. I'm talking the coldest spot in the known universe. Scientists are going to create it aboard the ISS. It's part of the Cold Atom Project, and the goal is to create a temperature of about one pico kelvin. That's one trillionth of a degree above absolute zero, and it's only possible in microgravity. Now, at that temperature, atoms will behave in their quantum state, and as we all know, the quantum state is where physics likes to get into the weird stuff. I'm talking about matter behaving like a wave. Now, we can't really do that here on Earth largely because of gravity. In microgravity, that's not an issue. So we could see some really cool science come out of this as a result, possibly letting us create something like a quantum sensor that could let us see gravity or even get a view into the icy oceans of Europa. But to know the long-term future of the ISS, it's best that we turn to our old friend, the Magic 8-Ball, which says, Answer hazy, ask again later. That's no big surprise. After all, this collaboration among international entities depends upon continued international collaboration. In February 2015, Russia announced its intention to reclaim all of its modules aboard the ISS and then rearrange them into a Russian-owned and operated space station by 2024. On top of that, in December 2015, NASA's chief of human spaceflight, William Gerstenmaier, said that NASA planned to get out of the ISS, quote, as quickly as possible, end quote. Even so, that's still talking about a decade away. But what happens after both of these parties leave? The most likely answer is that at that point, the ISS will be deorbited, which is a really polite way of saying we'll pull everyone out, and then engineers here on Earth will direct the space station to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean and burn up upon re-entry. Bye-bye, space station. But there's another possibility. Maybe the private sector will swoop in and fill in the gaps of Russia and the United States. That's entirely possible. In fact, NASA plans to hand over low Earth orbit to private space industry. I have a question for all of you guys out there. If you had the chance to go to the ISS, what would you study and why? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring the show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to our channel. Then, make sure to check out these other awesome videos right over here.